Oh, so this is the sign. This is the sign. This is why we're here. This is the big sign Richard Gage put up. I am not a fan of Richard Gage at all. I think he's one of those gatekeepers. Makes it look like we're still in something. But in reality, nothing ever happens. We had all these people doing this shit. Why aren't they prosecuting these motherfuckers by now? Oh, that's Richard Gage right there. He's getting whiter. He's getting older. Check out the sign. Check out the sign. This is serious stuff. You know, my I guess that's his sign right there. We're gonna, we're gonna have us an event. We might actually have us an event going on here. Whatever's doing, give me a thumbs up or, or uh, hold on, okay? We're late, we're late, so we can't sit down. There goes our sirens. <laughs> there were a lot of sirens going on that day, even at 520 and beyond. That is the time, of course, the third building fell down that day, in free fall speed. That's what Rethink911.org is all about. Now today, is a day of commemoration, a day of remembrance. 9-11, 2013. We are here to pay homage and remember, remembrance to all the people who perished on that day, as well as all who perished since as a result of those cataclysmic events. We're also here to pay homage to a, a fellow activist and truth seeker by the name of Colonel Robert Bowman. experience him up close as well as us here in New York where, uh, he, well, as you know, he traveled the country uh, calling for truth, calling for a high-level analysis of the events of 9-11, calling for investigation into the uh, statements of Project for a New American Century, and as a uh, high-level fighter pilot, he also called attention from an expert witness level to the absence of air defense that day. So, we know that Colonel Bowman is with us in spirit, smiling, saying, fantastic, what an amazing event with an amazing group of people here carrying the torch. Now, also I want to say hello to all the folks watching this through live stream. This is being live streamed at Occupy the Fed. And we thank uh, the videographers here for doing that work as well as the building. Um, uh, by the way, I always do this for those who don't know me. My name is Les Jamison. And uh, what an amazing, exciting time. We will also celebrate this day for all of us as activists around the world. And uh, also, absolutely, we commemorate the work of architects and engineers from 911 Truth. Rethink 9-11, our world changed on that day. 2,744 lives lost in New York and counting. More than 1 million lives lost in Afghanistan and Iraq and counting. Almost 7,000 U.S. troops lost in the war on terror and counting. A $4.5 trillion cost to you and me for the war on terror and counting. And also, a devastating effect on the first responders who we also pay homage to this day. But did you know? Now did you know that pressure
precious civil liberties were revoked by the Patriot Act, the Military Commissions Act, the NDAA, and today Americans can be subject to search and seizure without a warrant, detained or imprisoned indefinitely, without charge, without evidence, without a lawyer, without a trial. We can even be tortured or assassinated merely for being accused of being associated with terrorism or the use of force. And here's the scariest part, folks. These terms are not defined, and it all goes back to what? 9-11. So yes, indeed, ignoring the World Trade Center evidence is no longer an option. To further illuminate the purpose of this vital inquiry, I'd like to introduce, I have a great honor and privilege of introducing the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, the sponsor of the Rethink 9-11 campaign, who will address the implications of the question towering above us here in Times Square. How about it for the billboard?
urban area. We started at St. Paul's Chapel, where we gathered and educated the tourists who were coming to learn about 9-11 and what really happened there. Well, at least we gave them a little, a few surprises along their path. Then we proceeded to the City Hall, where we gave the educational materials to 51 city councilmen. Yeah. After that, we went to Democracy Now! by Amy Goodman on 25th Street, where we served as a protest outside of her offices. Why? Because she will not touch the 9-11 truth. Well, we said, Amy Goodman, come and interview us. You have to touch the 9-11 truth. 9-11 started major wars. 9-11 lost our civil liberties. 9-11 destroyed our economy. If we tackle, as a nation, the problem of 9-11 and how it happened, am I yelling too much? No! Somebody's going like this. Is it too much for you? from the tyranny of censorship, which we're seeing not only in our Congress, but in the mainstream media, which we have also visited after going to Democracy Now! NBC, ABC, CBS, CBC, and CNN all got the packages. The DVD, Bible Explosive Evidence, we delivered to every one of them, Rachel Maddow, Chris Hayes, Chris Matthews, Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, Ronald O'Hara. We will be relentless. Why? Because the American people are beginning to demand a real investigation. In fact, a new national survey commissioned by Rethink 9-11, conducted last month by the polling firm, YouGov, revealed that almost one in two Americans have doubts about the government's account of 9-11. Six, six years ago, it was not like this. Six years ago, how many of you were around in the streets before the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth came to assist you with the few architects and engineers we began to gather at the time and had people saying, where are the architects? Well, and then we get to the, to the question at hand, and that is the statement of Wesley Clark in 2007 when he was running for President of the United States. And he be went before the Commonwealth Club in California and he talked about the plan that was in the Pentagon to invade seven countries in five years. Those seven countries, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Sudan, Somalia, and Libya. Our government, literally as we speak, is still bombing Somalia. Sudan has been dismembered into two countries. Iraq is not functioning yet. Iran is on the list. Syria is not is under extreme attack right now. Lebanon is on the list. And Libya has ceased to exist as a country that functions in behalf of the people. So I would like to expand just a minute on this uh, statement by Wesley Clark. Now, what he said in laying ground, the ground for his comments is that in 1991, he paid a visit to the Pentagon and visited Paul Wolfowitz. And Paul Wolfowitz said that what the events of the decade of the 90s had demonstrated was that the United States could go all the way up with NATO expansion, the United States could go all the way up to the Russian border without a military response from Russia. So that meant that the United States military would have a free hand to act in the region, West Asia and North Africa. And now we've seen that. The penny to 
exactly what he learned in 1991. That's a pity to me. that I want to mention briefly is General Martin Dempsey, who is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, I just happen to have had the recent opportunity to speak with an investigative journalist. And he told me that the reason that Congress became involved in the debate was because on the very right of U.S. media, to knowingly lie to their public without any, with impunity. That's the state of freedom of the press in the United States. The last thing that I would like to mention is why 911 truth is so important. Because basically, in my opinion, what we were told by the Bush administration in 2001 and ever since then has been the big lie. For war after war after war after war. It was an excuse for the Bush administration to launch wars against international law. Tony Blair launched wars against international law. And now our President Barack Obama has launched wars against the peace, against international law. I dream and I yearn for the day when we, the people of the United States, can have a president of the United States who is not a war criminal. of the 9-11 commissioners. She asked the question, did they get it right? Well, guess who was there at that meeting? Our own Les Jameson. And Les has a few key questions for Cynthia. That was an amazing day there in Congressional Hill. If you can picture the uh, pomp and circumstance and the beautiful uh, decor of this Capitol building. And I also got to talk to some of your staffers beforehand. And folks, I knew what an incredible uh, endeavor it was to get these hearings in the first place. I know you and your staff worked weeks and probably months to arrange for uh, this day, which what they called one year after, did they get it right? And of course, many of us here, in our own research about the 9-11 investigation, uh, can absolutely appreciate that this investigation of the investigation had to be done, which Cynthia McKinney made happen. It was on C-SPAN, which was aired all over the country. Uh, and first, Cynthia, if we could mention, uh, if you have a memory of some of the uh, panelists, that there were some very, very uh, eminent people on that panel who were there as experts to uh, take in the evidence and then render their, uh, their basic determination of whether the 9-11 Commission got it right. Can you share some of those people with um, well, Wayne Madsen was one of the questioners. Mike Rupert was one of the questioners. We had uh, the Jersey Girls represented there. Um, we also had Peter Dale Scott as one of the presenters who talked about 
United States basic creation of Al-Qaeda. And uh, Peter Dale Scott is now serving on my dissertation committee. So that was a long-lasting and very fruitful um, relationship that was born. Um, we had, gee, you probably remember the rest of them better than me. We had everybody who's involved in some, one way or another. We had people there who were experienced uh, from Italy, a woman who is experienced in tracking terrorist money, terrorist finance. We had a gentleman from Greece who was there. He came all the way to testify. We had the gentleman who's in a lawyer who talked about the creation of a police state. And at that time, of course, we thought he was a bit premature, but now everything that he rolled out has happened in the United States. Is, if it isn't 100% police state, um, it's very close to it now. All you have to do is go to the darn airport as I did today, and uh, you see so many police and people who detain you and stop you. I get stopped when I travel. Repression of those who dare to dissent now. So the, the question of the United States and police state, I don't, I don't think it's a question anymore. The question is, when will the people step up and stop it? Yeah. That's the question. arriving at some conclusions about the 9-11 Commission report at the end of the day. And uh, one year later, there was an awful lot of evidence that that commission was, uh, of course, first headed by uh, Henry Kissinger, which lasted for about two weeks until it was discovered that uh, there was a conflict of interest because he was uh, representing some of the Saudi monarch family. And then Philip Jellicoe was brought in to head the 9-11 uh, investigation and all the evidence of his, uh, of course, being an insider of the Bush administration and, of course, a, uh, a, a co-director with uh, uh, Rice, Annalisa Rice, in, in, in many aspects. So, with all these um, people involved in the 9-11 investigation and the fact that this report was put out as the official report Cynthia, uh, can you share some thoughts about what your determination was based on the questioning one year later? Well, the conclusion that I arrived at is that George W. Bush, Condoleezza Rice, Dick Cheney should be impeached because they failed to protect the people of the United States on September 11th. That's why I found those articles of impeachment. Not only because of September 11th, because of the whole of lies that came out of the Bush administration, starting with the theft of the White House in 2000. So, uh, yes, that's right. Thank you very much. 12 years of lies. So that was one of the biggest conclusions. And every other administration, now we've got the Obama administration defending the lies and the torture and the criminal behavior of the Bush administration. So they need to go, too. Now, we all know that this woman is a model of courage beyond most people's imagination. And one example, just one, was a hearing with Donald Rumsfeld sitting at the table, a congressional hearing, and Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney questioning Donald Rumsfeld. Would you like to share what it is that you questioned him about, please? Thank you. Well, you all probably are aware of the story that I got kicked out of Congress for asking 
the questions about September 11. That was in the 2002 campaign. And so in 2004, I ran again and I won, so I went back. And by that time, we had a lot more information, and I was trying to get my seniority back, but the Democrats, of course, didn't want to have me being able to answer, ask all these questions of these folks. And um, as Rahm Emanuel said, I wasn't a team player. I will never be on that team of theft and corruption and lies and deception and theft of the American taxpayer dollars and of our moral compass. No way, I'll never be on that team. So anyway, I didn't get my seniority back. But they did put me on the House Armed Services Committee. But that meant that I was at the very
Yeah. I mean, this audience right here is an example of why you can say that. And uh, we know there's people all over the world watching and listening. Of course, we, we have a treat here for uh, our next little segment here. We have a gentleman who's a uh, former military. He's got a lot of badges to prove it. He's been with us since 8 a.m. this morning down at Ground Zero all day long. We're so glad to meet him. And uh, Richard will come up to introduce him. He's a native of Staten Island, and uh, he's got New York in his blood. Let's bring up Richard Gage again. And John Dean Natale has been an AE-911 Truth Volunteer for the last year, and he is pursuing, as an engineer, with how many degrees, John? Five engineering degrees. That's, that's a tie for, with Bob Bowman. John Dean Natale is a Marine. He commands the respect of the veterans who have a few questions of their own about 9-11. John, tell us about those questions and why you're, you care so much about 9-11 truth and why you're helping me 9-11. Thank you, Rich. It's been an absolute pleasure since I've known this man, which is not all that long, almost a year now. I am a former United States Marine. I did serve from 1987 to 1993. I was discharged for injuries sustained while in service to this country, and I am proud of my service as is every other Marine, and I have never stopped serving even though I have been officially discharged and I will never stop serving even if they kill me because I will come back from the afterlife and will still serve this country. And I'm going to be bringing a whole bunch of other Marines back with me. You better believe it people. The people in Washington are scared of you because you are waking up at an exponential rate. You go to the truth sites, you are learning what's going on, and if you've ever been to a site called From the Trenches World Report, I am one of the speakers on there on the radio show. I'm JD, U.S. Marine, fighting tyranny. And we are all fighting tyranny, because that is their goal, that is their objective, because there are a bunch of psychopaths down there, a bunch of sociopaths. They see us as nothing but cattle, but I disagree with that. I am not cattle, I am an American, and I am granted certain rights under the Constitution, and they will be upheld. Part of my attempts and my outreach isn't just isn't just to military. It's also to law enforcement and to other agencies of the federal gun uh, government, if you want to use that word the people that carry the guns. And so I address even the New York police sitting here, or standing, excuse me, listening to this right now, because at some point you will be issued order contrary to your conscience, because there is an ultimate plan here that they have already been trying to execute, and that's starting World War III, starting civil unrest, destroying jobs, destroying our sense of nationality, our sense of pride. It's not gonna fly, not in my country, not on my watch. allow me to backtrack just a tiny bit here. Richie Gage had made the comment that I have five degrees in engineering. I do have five degrees. Three are in engineering. One's in management. One is in finance. And this is because I was one of the guys that crawled through the minefields during the Persian Gulf War because we were supposed to be liberating Kuwait when in fact we were doing nothing more than protecting the corporate interests in the oil fields. We knew it. The running joke why we were there was we're here to protect the dinosaurs, meaning the oil on the ground. There was no disillusionment about it, but Marines are noble, and we will do what we are told because we do follow orders. We are highly disciplined, highly trained, and we will execute those commands to the best of our ability. Well, I'm not in the Marines anymore, but I still serve this country with that same level of faith. And my commands now come from the U.S. Constitution. Question. Would you restate that question, please? Why? What am I doing to reach out to veterans, or what questions are they asking? What questions do the veterans have? His question, his ostensible question is, what questions do the veterans have? The problem was for the long, for since 2001, September 11th, when this horrific event happened, many people went into cognitive dissonance, including me. 
I only took the red pill in 2010. I woke up after watching a Jesse Ventura show about the Pentagon, 9-11, and my specialty in the military was aircraft and missile systems. So they couldn't lie to me. I am highly trained in those fields, and when I saw what the government was trying to say occurred, and what the physical evidence showed, there was a clear contradiction. I woke up. Well, the rest of the military is waking up now also, and it's been going on only the last few years. The military, like the rest of us, was blindsided because we have a want, a need to believe we have an honest government, a loving government, a caring government, and we don't. They have lied to us all the way. But now the veterans are starting to ask questions, and very pertinent questions, and 9-11 was the seminal moment. Why? Because they engaged in an activity we can scrutinize, we can disassemble it, analyze it, look at it, and compare it to the story we're being told. We're not always, we don't always have that luxury with certain false flag events. And you can take some recent events in the Mideast as an example. But some of the questions the veterans are asking, how did those buildings come down? Clearly it's controlled demolition, and once I give them a technical explanation, that's the easy part. The technical part is always easy. But then we run into the difficult part. The emotional reluctance to accept the inevitable conclusion of what the technical information actually tells us. Terrorists didn't just walk into that building with oil drum after oil drum after oil drum after oil drum, 55 gallon drums of the necessary thermal explosives to take down those buildings and just walk past security waving, hi Chuck, how are you doing today? I'm just here to put some more explosives, excuse us, and then we'll be out for lunch. That's not the way it happened. They were escorted in, there's no question about it. The question that their veterans ask is, who is they? What was their intent? And that part of the thing that AE-911 doesn't do. We will bring you up to the evidence, up to the point of conclusion, but it was up to each and every American to make that decision. Because that's an emotional hurdle. You have to figure out how to get over yourself. And that's a very difficult thing to do. Don't kid yourself. It was difficult for me, and I'm sure it was difficult for everyone else that has woken up already. It will go on to be difficult as you try to wake up friends and family who are now facing that same hurdle, and you keep talking to them about it, and they say, but well, why would you say that? How could you say that? AE-911 has what we call sterility rule, and Richie Gage didn't make this term up, I did. We analyze the information, we, we understand what the inevitable conclusion is, but we do not state it because we do not want to give them a basis to discredit us on. We can't open the door to them like that. We have to keep the irrefutable evidence clean and pristine so that people like you can take it to your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers and say, look at this. You tell me how they're wrong, and now after you agree that they're right, what does it really mean to you? Because it means the same thing to all of us. There are a bunch of psychopaths down in Washington. They are trying to stop World War III over in Syria. They've been trying desperately, almost idiotically. The, it, the, the fanaticism is beyond comprehension at this point. I often say that what they're doing is more like a scene out of Saturday Night Live skit. Bad theater. I mean, that's how bad it is. It's gotten really awful. They don't even try and cover up their footsteps anymore. But it is up to us, the American people, you, you, you. There is no they. There is no John Wayne riding over the ridge wearing his six-shooter. We are the people. You are. I am. We are the posse. We are the power. That's the way the Constitution was designed. That's what the Founding Fathers envisioned, because they knew better. They understood. That's why the Second Amendment right is so important, because every single government that has disarmed its population then massacred it. That's why you disarm them first. That's why it's so critical to keep our fundamental rights, our fundamental amendments. It's so we stay alive. So we have a country to raise our families in and to give them something. We're not always going to be here. Someday it's just going to be our survivors, our children, our grandchildren, maybe our, our brothers, our sisters, and then their children. But we want something for them that is better than what we have today. It's innate. It's natural. That's what everybody wants. But those psychopaths, these international banksters, the corporate mafia, in their minds, everything you have earned, everything you have made belongs to them. How dare you think you actually own it? You must be insane. In fact, they even coming out with a new encyclopedia. Uh, psychological definition to help call people crazy who think they actually own their property. This way they can lock you up and take it. 
And another one is oppositional defiance disorder. If you don't agree with the government, or you think their rationales about what they're doing are incorrect, you have a psychological condition. We're gonna have to lock you up and take away all your property and all your money. This is the way they think. This is their plan for us. And that's why something like this is so important because every revolution, every time you have to save a country, it starts with the ide ideological process. What's really happening? Start thinking, start questioning. And he's in the question. Do you know what the retail fell? Okay. I've been given my short string here. Mr. Gates has informed me. Wrap it up. So I will do that. Into what I've been telling us for years. So I'm, I'm grateful for Mr. Lehman for his incredible arrogance for saying it was, it was not their job. I just wish uh, more cameras were in the room. Like I said, our local newspaper, the Star Ledger, sponsored the, the event and they wouldn't give me the video. Because I, I, I wanted desperately to have that video of John Lehman saying to America, it was only 300 plus people in the room, but I wanted the video of John Lehman. We're doing a documentary. Chairman of the 9-11 Commission. One of the co-chairmen of the 9-11 Commission, by the way. He wasn't just an investigator. Right now we're, we're, we're like over. You know that John Lehman, uh, I, I want to tell you this really quick. I, I don't know if you know, but John Lehman, Cynthia McKinney talked about the war games. And, and thank you, by the way, for, for mentioning that, because I've been on the war. Well, we just finished our 9-11, uh... <laughs> 9-11, uh... show. Whatever, whatever that may be. Same usual suspects... sent here to make you think that uh, something's happening, but nothing ever happens. I'm just sitting here at Times Square looking, just finished 9 11. Then I happen to look up and what do I see? This big fucking eyeball staring at us. Oh my god. This shit just never stops. Look at this shit. A fucking big, a big fucking huge fucking sign post way the, you know, look it down over us in, in, in Times Square. Can you believe this shit? Oh my god. It just doesn't, it just keeps getting worse. Look at this shit. <laughs> and it's got the flag right in front of it. Look at this shit. Is that any fucking Nazi shit? I don't know what to tell you. Here in Times Square, just look at this shit. That's unbelievable. Always being watched, aren't we? Their spies are out in force. Eyeball watching us. There's the yellow eyeball. Oh, 
check this guy out. Oh, this guy's great. Oh, now this is great. Look at this guy. Oh my god. It's incredible. <laughs> He's incredible. Look at him. He's not making a move. I could swear that's a statue. It's incredible. <laughs> that's got to be incredibly hard. I can't imagine how he can do that. my money too, Paul. More than you'll know. We got it all going tonight, yeah. Mr. Silver. Comedy show tonight, take your girlfriend out. Every time I go to one of these 9-11 things, I feel like I've been, I've been fucked. <laughs> I know I've been screwed over, and I know these fuck these fuckers are are controlling this fucking 9/11 uh, truth movement. They're bullshit people like Cynthia McKinney, Cindy Sheehan, Luke Kudaski can go to fucking hell. Mr. Uh, every time I meet that fucker, uh, Richard Gage just confirms what I what I think about that that fucker. That satanic piece of shit. You could tell you know you could tell a lot about somebody when you meet them face to face, when you shake their hand, when you talk to them. You could tell if they're legit, if they're real. When I talk to Richard Gage in person, he comes across as a fucking scaly piece of shit. He's a Satanist. I know he's a fucking Satanist. Put here to control the agenda. But you know, you do meet some good people here. And that's why I come to these things. Because through it all, there are some good people. And those are the people I'm trying to reach reach out to. And those are the try to people they try to block you from meeting, but Oh my god, we got the Hulk here now. God, it is just so hot, oppressively. Fucking, this is September, middle of September, and it feels like it feels like I'm in the middle of July in New, or in New Orleans or Fort Pope, Louisiana. 
humidity has to be close to 90 percent. It's all orchestrated, folks. Keep us away from 9-11. Keep the people away from the polls. Subvert democracy. Subvert the truth. So, so, what so? What so? This is fashion.